Welcome to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, your host here in Austin on this Sunday, July 17th, 2016. We have the news that three officers have been killed, assassinated in Baton Rouge. One suspect is dead. Two others are in custody. We're going to be going into details about that, the responses of various people, including the head of the police union in Cleveland, where the RNC is going to be taking place. He says Obama has blood on his hands. We're going to play you that clip and what he had to say about how Obama is pushing this narrative, this divide and conquer, this clash between different groups within our country, turning this into as divisive a country as I've ever seen in my lifetime, and the kind of violence that we've never seen before in our lifetime as well. Now, we've got Alex and crew on their way to the RNC in transit. That's why I'm here today doing the show. Alex is on his way to Cleveland to cover the RNC. We've got a report from Alex. He saw none other than Karl Rove on his plane, and they had an interesting encounter. Alex went up to ask him some questions, and, you know, you're not allowed to look these people, our majesties, our, our, our uh, elite in the eye even, uh, dare you even talk to them. And so he asked him a couple of questions. He's got the uh, video recorder going on, and uh, Karl Rove got very frosty about it, and so he turned it off. But Karl Rove kept it going, and he called the police on Alex, and uh, we'll let you know. Uh, we'll show you that, that video coming up in the next uh, segment. Also, we have uh, news on the Turkish coup. We've got a lot of... Uh, Finger pointing going on. We've got uh, the Turkish president, Erdogan, as they put down the coup. He blames the U.S., the CIA, and Fatala Gulen, the Turkish imam that uh, was brought over into this country by uh, the CIA, given refuge here. And they're trying to get him extradited. Of course, then uh, Syria uh, and Gulen are kicking back against Erdogan, saying that he faked it, that it was a false flag, that he just wanted to use that as an effort to increase the crackdown in that authoritarian regime. You know, he has more people locked up, more journalists locked up than any other country in the world, pretty much. A very repressive regime, a regime that he has moved from secularism to Islamification. But we're going to take a look at the response of the United States. And also, most importantly, as we look at this coup in Turkey, I have to ask you, are you concerned if there's an Islamic coup going on here in America, perhaps there is. Perhaps it's more subtle than you ever imagined. You know, when we look at the way that our education system is with Common Core, with the political correctness, the social justice warriors, the people who come out of high school and college and don't know anything about the lies that have been told about white privilege. Do you know where that came from, of course? That came from Bill Ayers. And the Students for Democratic Society, which turned into the Weather Underground, pushing this white skin privilege narrative uh, that was invented in 1965 by another college professor. But, you know, he stopped bombing buildings and he decided he would create an army of social justice warriors, that he would take over our children. We need to be very careful about who controls our educational system. And one of the people involved, uh, perhaps, in this Turkish coup, certainly one of the figures that is, there's, there's Erdogan, who is there, and there's his former ally, Fatala Gulen, who is now in exile in the United States. They were once allies, now they are enemies, and essentially the, I would say, the two heads of the uh, power interests in Turkey. We're going to be talking to Mark Hall. We've had him on once before. Talk to him about a documentary that he did, Killing Ed, Killing Education. This is a documentary that shows the worst case scenario of private schools that are funded by taxpayer money. We call those charter schools. It's an open invitation to crony capitalism, but he looked at something that was far worse than crony capitalism. He looked at what's going on with the network of Harmony schools that are tied to Fatala Gulen here in the United States. Get about a half a billion dollars. What are the values that this group is teaching us? We've seen the results and the fruit of what Bill Ayers has done. What's going to happen now as the Islamic uh, people take over hundreds of our schools here in the United States, teaching about 60,000 students? We're going to talk in the second hour to Mark Hall about what his research has uncovered and how his film has been shut down, just like they shut down Vaxxed at Tribeca. His film has been shut down at film festivals all over the country. We'll be right back. The Republican National Convention is going to be starting tomorrow in Cleveland, Ohio. Alex Jones and most of our crew are on their way. And uh, we're reporting here live as Alex was traveling to Cleveland. Interestingly enough, on the same plane coming out of Austin, he saw waiting to get on the plane, Carl Rove. And Alex went over to talk to him. Here's a clip of what happened. 
Okay, folks, Carl Rove is on the same flight with us to Cleveland. We're here in Dallas. I'm just going to go over and ask me a few questions. Let's go. Ahead. Now, normally, if it was a university student yeah, or something. Once, once again, once again, you're distorting the facts, but I appreciate it. And what, I love and what I've told you is, I'm working for Fox. I have a. If you want me to appear on your program, you call Fox. And I, and I know you don't think the rules apply to you, Alex. But you do call Fox. If you have to go around the table, so call Fox. Well, I do have an audience almost as big as Fox. Call Fox. The one year will be better. Oh, I know. Call Fox. So this is Alex talking to Carl Rove in the airport. No, no. I'm having a conversation with friends. I do you too much. Would you mind wandering off? Well, I'd like to finish my conversation with my friends. Or are you important? You're important to my friends. No, I'm not saying I'm more important to my friends. Thank you. Then one's wrong, though. He wants to win the argument. He can only win the argument when it's a controlled argument. This guy's been against Trump the whole time. He wants to siphon off the money like in 2008 and like he did in 2012. And that's what he does. Here he is right here, talking to these little delegates and people. The super delegates, they hoped they could get to siphon off the votes, but he failed. So this guy's going in as a failure in Cleveland, unable to steal the election from Trump. He wouldn't talk to him for a war stock. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. There'll be lots of this once we're in Cleveland. We had to talk to him, obviously. And he played this whole little game. I think he, I waited five minutes when we talked to these folks. I knew as soon as he came over, he'd be like, these are my friends. You know, you're interrupting them while they try to talk to me. Well, they're just my little friends. This is the guy that supported Bush and the assault weapons man. This is the guy that pushed amnesty. This is the guy that's a global. These are the people that have hijacked the Republican Party. The, the Clintons and the Bushes vacation together. They call themselves brothers and sisters. And let's just over. Hey, Carl, I'm going to leave you alone. I appreciate your time. Do you consider yourself a family member like the Bushes do with the Clintons? <laughs> Is he a founder with the Clintons? No, 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 Do you consider the Clintons to be family? No. Why don't you wander off? Why don't, why don't you wander around? I am. I am. Just are you with? Are you family with the Clintons? Carl's going to leave you yeah, and so after that, uh, he, he threatened to call the police on Alex. Of course, he did call the police on one of our reporters, InfoWars uh, reporters, who asked him questions at a public uh, speech at the University of Texas. Aaron Dykes was arrested, charged with trespassing, for merely asking a question of his majesty. And of course, Alex is on his way to the RNC. <laughs> it's going to be an interesting couple of days as, uh, as we see what happens. Of course, we've had uh, Roger Stone talk about the fact that he believes that uh, Donald Trump is going to introduce a cabinet pick, uh, several cabinet picks at the RNC this coming week. Now, of course, you can't promise jobs ahead of election to somebody. You get into a legal issue. But he said it would be perfectly legal if he were to say, well, I'm going to choose for such and such a position. Somebody, I'm going to choose somebody exactly like uh, this particular guy <laughs> or somebody like him. You can uh, do that and, and uh, give people an idea of what you want to do. And, of course, uh, you should be able to do that without essentially uh, setting up a quid pro quo of uh, being accused of violating the election laws. Now, Alex uh, also has talked about how dangerous this is going to be. Of course, we know there's a, a lot of presence, uh, police presence in the area. There's been a lot of assassinations. Today, we've had uh, another event where police officers were ambushed and killed. We've had three officers killed in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. One suspect has been killed. Two others are in custody as we go to air. Uh, we've had... Uh, Finally, uh, Loretta Lynch, Attorney General, come out and say something about this. Obama is going to be making a speech about it. But we also have the uh, Cleveland Police Union head. I want to play that clip, uh, pull that clip up. And he talks, and we have this up on Infowars.com. Uh, he believes that Obama has blood on his hands because he believes, as we do, that Obama has been creating this division, this narrative that black lives matter. And getting angry. If you say, well, white lives also matter, blue lives also matter. As a matter of fact, all lives matter. He doesn't want that narrative out. He wants to create a, a victim mentality, an us versus them mentality.
by singling out one group and pitting it against the others. And they've been very effective at doing that on both ends. Getting black people angry at what's happening when the police are following the training and using the weapons that the federal government gives them to militarize the police, to act more like we have a police state rather than a situation where we're going to have a due process where people are arrested and questioned and charged. No, they want to have a kind of judge dread uh, going on on the streets, and they want this kind of pushback. It's by design. They're escalating both sides. I mean, we see this happening Everywhere. We've seen this happening in other countries. That's what we're going to talk about later in the broadcast. We're going to talk about what's going on in Turkey. Everybody's pointing fingers at everybody else. Everybody believes that the United States and the CIA were behind this coup against Erdogan, working with Gulen. These are, uh, many people have made that uh, point. Whereas the uh, Gulen and Syria are saying, uh, no, we think that it was a false flag done by Erdogan. Look, the United States government has been involved on both sides of most conflicts and most wars in my lifetime. And that's what they're doing here in the United States. They're involved with the brutality that you see coming from the police. They're involved with the assassinations that you see coming from Black Lives Matter. Fomenting this, even if they aren't directly running it. They create the environment that creates the conflict and then they escalate it. And that's what... The police union head in Cleveland pointed out in this clip. Let's play that clip. This all began with a 911 call from an African-American male uh, saying that another African-American male was pointing a gun at him. Those officers responded. That male didn't comply and uh, tragically ended up losing his life, life over that with a gun in his pocket. This is how this began. The President of the United States validated false narrative and the nonsense that Black Lives Matter and the media are pressing out there to the public, validated it with his very divisive statements, and now we see an escalation. Um, this has got to end. We need some leadership in this country to come forward and put an end to this. I don't care if it's clergy, I don't care who it is, but somebody's got to step up and put an end to this because it's the false narrative and very influential people that are that are politicizing the false narrative um, absolutely insane that we have a president of the united states and a governor of minnesota making the statements that they made less than one day after those uh, police involved shootings and those police involved shootings make no mistake are what absolutely has triggered this this rash of of, of senseless murders of law enforcement officers across this country. Um, it, it is reprehensible. And the President of the United States has blood on his hands and it will not be able to come washed off. The person you just heard is the police union head in Cleveland. And of course, that's where the RNC is going to be held beginning tomorrow. As I mentioned, our crew, Alex Jones and our crew are on their way to uh, the RNC. Uh, we have uh, taken out uh, ads and we're running airplanes with banners saying Hillary for Clinton. See if you can pull that up as a B-roll. It's, it's pretty amazing, but we've got a couple of reports that are up on our YouTube channel, as well as uh, Infowars.com, where you can see Rob Dew doing a ride-along with the guy who is uh, flying the plane, pulling the banner, as well as you can see what that banner looks like. And we thank you for your support. Without your support, we would not be able to get that message out. You know, there's a lot of different ways you can get the message out. We do articles, we do research, we give you uh, the information as it's breaking, tie the research together. But, of course, there's another time when there is a, it's appropriate for us to do some activism. And that's going to be coming up at the RNC this week. We're going to have live reports from there. We're going to have some more live reports from Alex Jones when we come back. Stay with us. Alex Jones and most of our crew are on their way to the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. And, of course, there's been a lot of talk about violence there. Uh, Cleveland activists say they're wary of city's plans to process thousands of arrests. Again, of course, when they report it from that standpoint, Reuters, it looks as though uh, they're, uh, they're getting aggressive, and they were aggressive. I mean, they, they're trying to confine protesters from both sides in a very small area to make sure there'll be a fight. That's what they were planning on doing. They were successful in coming in and getting that area expanded. But, of course, when you go to presidential nominating conventions, the First Amendment is confined to an area, just like they did out at the Bundy Ranch. Put a little squared-off area and said, uh, this is your First Amendment area. 
And somebody wrote a handwritten sign and said the First Amendment is not an area. So the First Amendment is being uh, squashed in uh, Cleveland in the sense that they won't allow people to walk around freely. But, of course, there is a serious threat of violence from the same people who have been attacking police and other people. Just as we had the individual who killed all those police officers in Dallas say he wants to kill white people and police officers. It's just uh, unfocused hatred that is caused by the promotion of the Black Lives and Black Lives Matter only movement. We should call it Black Lives Only Matter. That's really what we ought to call it so the people understand that. We're not saying black lives don't matter. But they're saying that other lives don't matter. They're saying black lives only matter. So there are death threats, and Alex is going to uh, speak to that. He has spoken to that. Uh, you need to be uh, concerned about what's going to happen at this uh, convention. And as I just pointed out in the wake of this most recent shooting today in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, we had uh, three officers killed. Of course, that was the site of one of the uh, people that um, was killed uh, and live streamed on social media. That individual, however, unlike the other one who had not done anything, he had been pulled over uh, and uh, was shot and that, that was uh, live streamed as he died. Uh, that individual had not done anything. But in Baton Rouge, there was a question as to what had happened. They had been told that there was an individual with a gun, as you heard that clip that we ran from the police chief in Cleveland, where the RNC is going to be taking place. Uh, he said, we were told there was an individual threatening others with a gun. And so they were on heightened alert. It was not a clear-cut case. There are many clear-cut cases of excessive use of force by the police. But they always seize on the ones that have a gray area aspect to it, like this one did. And now they have shot and killed three officers. Many others have been wounded. They've killed one suspect. Two other people are in custody. The police chief in Cleveland has said that Obama has blood on his hands, that he will not be able to wash off. Let's go to this report from Alex Jones. He talked about the fact that even though there are death threats against uh, many different groups there, including the police, it's not going to stop us from going there to report at either of these conventions. It's Saturday, July 16, 2016, and I've had friends, I've had family, I've had uh, former Navy SEALs and other people ask me, why are you going to Cleveland when it's so incredibly dangerous, when it's an admitted terrorist target, uh, when you're doing so much good in the info war, why are you going? And it's because this is a critical year, not just here, but worldwide. It's populism against globalism. And there have been so many people trying to intimidate free speech in this country and worldwide, and so many on the controlled left that have been trying to ban free speech. And they've got the Democratic Party platform coming up in uh, Philadelphia in two weeks. They have a, a plan to arrest people that deny man-made climate change. That's people that, that don't want to pay the globalists, carbon taxes. That I have to go out and exercise free speech when it's dangerous when it's all maligned, just at a metaphysical level, putting my skin in the game. That's what I've always done. And it's not because I have something to prove. It's that I understand that sometimes you've got to walk along the ridge. Sometimes you've got to be skylined. That's a military term uh, where you don't want to walk on the top of a hill where the blue sky is behind you silhouetted. It's a perfect target. Unless you're drawing fire. And I mean that, again, at a political level. We have to go out and show the tyrants for who they are. Not just let them tell us, hey, you better not show up or we're going to get you. But show them it doesn't matter that the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants to Thomas Jefferson. And, and my God, I'm the guy that takes care of my family. I'm the guy that takes care of my kids. I, I mean, I'm the guy that runs InfoWars. I've got a lot of responsibilities and I, I, I know they're important. But again, at a spiritual level, it is important to not run from the enemy, but to confront the enemy peacefully with information because ideas are bulletproof. And in God's plan, I know it's the right thing to go to Cleveland, to have our crew go to Philadelphia, Bilderberg, and other places. Like Bohemian Grove we snuck into, and you know, going out and protesting the KKK, and La Raza and Mecha and other racist hate groups. It's what we do. And compared to what soldiers have done in the past, it's really nothing. But let's expand on that. If you look at Lexington and Concord, where the British were coming and confiscating civilian and the local government's guns, 1775, it's what started 1776, it's what July 4th is, 
they had their guys ready. They're in front of the armory. They're on the hill. And they said, don't fire first. And But if they want a war, they're going to get one. Well, I'm going unarmed myself. I'm going armed with information and the truth. But the point is, is that that was up there on the hill, waiting for the British, a force of four or five times bigger, and with better weapons, to, 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 to show up and to try to take their guns. And they said, look, we're not turning them in. Well, I'm not turning my free speech in, so I'll be there on the hill. That's how this works. And if the globalists and George Soros, and people like that, want to fire the shot heard around the world, that's their issue. And if they want to, you know, try to hire some, you know, mentally ill, twisted right winger or something to pull something, I see that in the tea leaves. That's the way it is. We have to forget the maneuvers at certain points and go straight at them. We've gotten in this position because we always try to think things out too far and, and, and look at every angle instead of just doing what's right and saying, hey, justice be done, may the heavens fall. I'm done playing games and I'm not trying to escape the new world order. I'm trying to seek it out and expose it and defeat it. And to do that, I have to meet it on the intellectual plane of battle. We're winning the intellectual plane. Brexit. Congress has a 9% approval rating. The media, AP poll, 6% trust. The enemy is dying. The globalist lie is collapsing. The dinosaur media is already over. And now it's time to boldly stand up and say, we're not backing down. We're never giving in. And they may steal this election. They may engage in other frauds, just like they no-build Hillary. Just like they said, oh, we're not going to charge her. That made her even more unpopular. Resistance is victory. But if we don't speak out, if we don't take action, if we don't call for her to be arrested or indicted, then it would never even get to the point of them saying we're not going to indict her. She's above the law. That's why resistance is victory. Whether we win today or we win next year or five years from now, it's that animating contest of liberty, and it's the act exactly. of Exactly, and that, you can see the rest of that report at Infowars.com and at our YouTube uh, channel. Of course, as Alex is going there, they're talking about how Cleveland's uh, new park is going to define resistance. Wired Magazine points out there's going to be tens of thousands of people combined into a three-square-mile area of the city. All these people who are adamantly opposed to each other, and they say, well, they're going to outlaw tennis balls, flashlights, and water guns, but under Ohio laws, you'll be able to carry real guns. Well, you know, you can't defend yourself with a tennis ball, a flashlight, or a squirt gun. It's going to be dangerous, but it's very important that we be there. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Alex Jones and our crew are on their way to the RNC in Cleveland. They'll be filing live reports. We'll have live broadcasts from Cleveland this week. Uh, I'll also be here for uh, some of the broadcast, but for the most part, we'll be giving you live updates as to what's going on there. We've got a large number of reporters will be covering every aspect of that. I want to get to what's happened in Turkey, as well as a couple of follow-up articles on the terrorism in Nice, France. Before I do, real quickly, I want to let you know that we have a sale on DNA Force. We now have it at 25% off, InfoWarsLife.com. This is one of our premier products. There's a reason why just one of these ingredients in DNA Force costs about $30,000 per batch. So this is a premium product, and when you get this at a 25% discount, it is a great uh, discount, great time to try this product if you're not uh, currently using it or to stock up on it if you uh, I have been someone who's been using this. Now, it's loaded with a patented BioPQQ. That's a compound that's been backed by 175 clinical studies. You can look at those studies yourself. You can look at the reviews online, see what people are talking about with this. It's got uh, more potent antioxidant activity than vitamin C. And, of course, it's not just that ingredient. It also has CoQ10, digestive enzymes, trans res resveratrol, and many other things. And, of course, resveratrol is one of those things that has been uh, also linked and studied in many different uh, aspects in terms of helping you uh, life extension and that sort of thing. So take a look at and do your own research. We can't connect the dots for you, but we can direct you to the studies that you can find for yourself on the Internet, or you can take a look at what people are saying. They're 25% off DNA Force at InfoWarsLife.com. Also, don't forget, as we've got the RNC convention coming up this week, get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt. They now are back in stock at InfoWarsStore.com. All new Hillary for Prison t-shirts now live at InfoWarsStore.com. And, of course, we appreciate you uh, supporting us. And uh, those Hillary for Prison t-shirts, you can see that now, uh, essentially the design uh, we paid to uh, fly it over Cleveland. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you can actually uh, get one to uh, fly on your own chest, uh, just as you see that now flying <laughs> over Cleveland, Hillary for prison, and uh, it's uh, being pulled around right now with the uh, plane. You can see the report, Rob Dew flying in the plane, doing a broadcast of that. That's up on our YouTube channel, and it's also on, uh, on Infowars.com. And you can get your own T-shirt there. Help support the operation. Help support what we're doing right there. Hillary for Prison 2016. <laughs> Some great shots of that. Okay. Before we leave the RNC, I just want to give you a quick update on some of the things that are happening there. There was an interesting article from The Hill talking about winners and losers. And, of course, it was at the very end of uh, last week, Thursday and Friday, they were talking about uh, what was happening as the delegates were going to be coming and the convention is going to start tomorrow. But there's a lot that's already been happening there, of course, with the uh, platform and the rules committee meetings. This is where the never Trump people were going to try to change the rules and essentially alter the results of the election, saying that their opinions mattered more than the opinions of the voters. I could never get anybody from the Free, free the Delegates movements to come on and, and talk to me to be interviewed because it, it is just quite frankly, we all understand what it is. It's a super delegate, elitist fraud committed on the voters. They go into these areas and tell everybody, hey, we're going to have an election. Uh, you're going to get to pick this. Everybody goes, does the election. They uh, have the elections paid for by the state. And then they say, no, 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 no. We don't like the results. And, and we have a private party, you know. So they're public when they want to be and they're private when they want to be. You know, it's just like crony capitalism. If the banks or the uh, light rail systems that are coming through like we have here in Texas, these uh, crony capitalists, when they come through, they get all this money from the government saying, you know, it's in everybody's best interest for us to do this. So we need your, your uh, financing. We need you to uh, steal uh, property using eminent domain and turn it over to us. But then if they lose money, guess who gets stuck with the bill? They privatize their profits. They uh, make public their losses. They socialize their losses. And so that's what we see. It's just it's not only uh, sour grapes, but it was an effort to say, well, no, now we're private. Now we're public. Now we're private again. Now we're public again. That all got shut down, interestingly enough. I'm sure it had a lot to do with the fact that Donald Trump picked uh, Pence, who was essentially uh, throwing a bone to the uh, GOP establishment. But they're saying that uh, Trump's positions on immigration and trade have now been officially put into the uh, platform committee and you know the the platform doesn't really make that much difference it's really uh, the 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 uh, candidate is going to create his own platform and he's not going to be governed by the platform it has absolutely no effect on the candidate once they take office but it was interesting when they talked about how they beat back the never trump people they said that former virginia attorney general ken cuccinelli who was on the rules committee was and also a ted cruz ally was going to introduce a lot of proposals uh, that we're going to alter, that we're going to strip uh, the RNC of its power over the nominating process. Now, as they were starting to do this, the woman who was chairing this declared an emergency recess and said the printer needed to be fixed. <laughs> uh, that was just a ruse, as they point out in the Hill. So the break was so that Priebus and other top RNC officials could convene a private meeting. Uh, to talk to Cuccinelli and tell him uh, uh, not to do this, not to embarrass them, not to bring this up. And, of course, then they didn't. Interestingly enough, they say that um, uh, what he was really trying to do, one of the key things that Cuccinelli and others are trying to do, was to make sure that future elections would not include independents or Democrats. In other words, not allow, bar independents and Democrats from voting in all uh, RNC primaries. Uh, well, you know what? I think you probably want somebody who can get independents. That's the way you win elections. You don't win elections. You can win a nomination easily enough, like Ted Cruz, if only uh, the diehard Republicans are allowed to uh, vote. But you really want to uh, get some. You really want to find out uh, if you're going to get a candidate who's going to win. And of course, they keep saying that. Well, you know, we we want Ted Cruz because um, uh, we don't think that Donald Trump can win. Well, Donald Trump beat him largely because he got so many independents supporting him. More independents support him than support Hillary Clinton. Uh, they want to make sure that doesn't happen again. And then they tried to say, well, we want to take control of the votes with the Never Trump movement. Uh, the people who were going to change the rules, they call it the Free the Delegates, saying that they're not going to be bound by the public election. They were going to just do whatever they wished. And they couched it in terms of obeying their conscience and in terms of them having First Amendment rights. What a bunch of nonsense. Now, they point out in this article from The Hill... That attracted very little support, with only about a dozen of the 112-member panel 
uh, far below the threshold, even already low, of only 28 signatures on the proposal so that it would come to the floor for a vote. So they didn't even come close to what they needed to bring this, release the delegates, free the delegates up for a vote. So it looks like that part of it is, is not going to happen. Meanwhile, uh, Bob Dole is very disappointed that Jeb Bush is going to skip the convention. And I, I think that Bob Dole is probably the only one who would notice that Jeb Bush is missing from the convention. <laughs> but he does call out Jeb Bush on the fact that, hey, he took a pledge and he said he would support the eventual nominee. And he's not doing it. Yeah. He would have betrayed us on all of the issues just as he's betrayed himself on that pledge. Uh, meanwhile, they are moving to talk about the fact that what we need to do with immigration is control immigration from specific countries. In other words, it's not going to be a religious test, but it's going to be a geographical test. You know, these are people that we've gone into their country. We've created a civil war, and then we want to bring that civil war to America. That's the policy of Obama, quite frankly. And that's what we see happening over and over again. That's what I want to focus on for the rest of the broadcast. We're going to talk about what's going on in Turkey. The Turkish coup. We also have joining us in the second hour, we have Mark Hall, who is a filmmaker. If you remember the uh, documentary film Vaxxed, about the connection between autism and vaccines. And that was shut down from the Tribeca Film uh, Festival. And Robert De Niro, who is the public face of the film festival, was not very happy with that. And he said, you know, I think we ought to have an open discussion of these ideas. That's what films should be about. And I think he truly regretted allowing the administrator and, interestingly enough, other filmmakers censor that. But what we have seen with this film that Mark Hall put together, looking at the influence of a Turkish imam that is at the center of this Turkish coup, that was shut down by Texas film festivals. South by Southwest, the Lone Star Film Festival, the Dallas Inter International Film Festival, they all shut it down. We're going to talk to him about what he knows about this coup that is coming to our educational system here in the United States. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In the next hour, we're going to be talking to Mark Hall, a film documentarian. His uh, film, Killing Ed, looked at charter schools. And, of course, the issue with charter schools, one of the key issues of that, it is uh, these are schools that are public publicly funded with taxpayer money, but they're run privately. So one of the problems that develops from that is one of crony capitalism. Uh, that's something we need to guard against. But one of the worst case examples that he found of that is what the documentary really kind of centers on is a, a group of schools that are run by an Islamic movement. The same guy who is in exile in the United States, the same guy that is being accused by the Turkish government of being behind the coup, or at least his supporters. And, of course, he is one of the uh, two individuals in Turkey that is uh, that are really the power bases there. It's uh, Gulan and Erdogan, both of them Islamicists, okay? That's not secularists, okay? And both of them with ties to NATO and to the CIA. So the water is pretty murky here. There's not always a good guy in these fights. You need to understand that. But we're going to talk to uh, Mark Hall. He knows the... Uh, uh, the setting here, he's uh, studied this quite a bit. Of course, his film has been censored, just like we saw Vaxxed censored, talking about the connection between vaxism, uh, vaccines and autism. Uh, this film, because it talks about uh, Islam and essentially a Turkish coup against the U.S. educational system, uh, because it talks about that, it has been shut down. The New York Times would not review it. Texas film festivals would not show it. It has been shown in some film festivals. I've seen it myself. It's an excellent film. You can get it. Uh, it's now on DVD. But we're going to talk to him in the next hour. Before we go to that, there's some updates on uh, what happened in uh, Nice. And, of course, as we pointed out last week, everybody, we had all these reports from mainstream media blaming the attack on the truck. It can't be the fault of radical Islam. No, it was. It was actually uh, ISIS, a guy who said that uh, his, his family has shown that just minutes uh, before the attack, he texted to somebody, bring more weapons, it's good, I have the equipment. Okay, He has also sent a great deal of money, I believe it was something like um, 84,000 pounds or something to uh, in, in British pounds, to his family in Tunisia. And you have to ask yourself, was this guy really put upon here? Was he really exploited by the Europeans, as we see uh, Peter Bergen, the expert, 
so-called expert on terrorism on CNN say. Uh, we've got a clip from uh, Peter Bergen. I want to play this for you because he says that actually it is uh, European fascism that uh, triggered this guy, that turned him into this monster mowing down little children with a big 18-wheeler. I mean, that is such an insult to our intelligence. And how did this guy get so much money working as a, at a uh, low-level manual labor jobs, okay, that he could send in just a few years of being there, send the equivalent of $120,000 or $30,000 back to family in Tunisia. Yeah, right. Okay. Let's play this clip from Peter Bergen. Well, I think it is, you know, uh, it, it is a major problem in Europe. And I mean, the, we're, you know, ISIS is going to be destroyed, contained, or uh, choose your verb in the next year or so, where they're going to be really on, you know, in a, in a very, very bad place. They may lose Mosul. But the big drivers of this are a regional civil war between the Sunni and the Shia, the collapse of Arab governance around the Middle East, you know, the vast waves of immigration that result of these two phenomena, and then the rise of European fashion, fascism, to be frank. I mean, in every single country, including France, where the nationalist uh, front, the, the essentially ultra-nationalist proto-fascist party is doing pretty well. And I think the combination of large-scale immigration and the rise of European fascism is a very toxic mix. And unfortunately, it will continue to produce events like what, we, what we've seen uh, tonight again and again and again. And there's no easy fixes. Okay, I, I, let's just cut this guy off, because I can't stand hearing this guy continually talking about the rise of European fascism as if that was the trigger for this. That's absolute nonsense. He started to almost say, when you heard him, he almost started to say European fashion. Yeah, that's the fashion that's being foisted upon people by Angela Merkel, uh, by Hollanda, who spends three times the uh, wages an average Frenchman makes on just doing his hair. Okay, that's the arrogance of these people. There wasn't anybody taunting or harming this guy. He had been, he'd given nothing but a helping hand by these people, and yet... He responded by running them down out of hate, out of that hateful religion that he was following. This is World War III. This is what they're trying to do in this country. They're deliberately trying. When they talk about European fascism, they're just simply talking about the fact that people are angry that Muslims that are coming to this country that are being brought here by the government in massive numbers that will not assemble. You know, when it's the difference between helping somebody and having an invasion is the numbers of people that you bring in and the character of the people that you're bringing them in and where you're bringing them from. They've gone to these countries. They have created wars, created civil wars. Then they bring these people here in mass numbers. And it is a planned attack. This is what Alex Jones was talking about when he said, emergency, the planet is close to World War III. Here's, here's his report. It's Saturday, July 16th. 2016, Alex Jones here with the most dire geopolitical alert that we have ever issued in my 21 years on air. Interviewing top political scientists, Pentagon insiders, you name it, we have never issued an alert this serious. Now, several times over the years, we've come out and said this alert is the most serious as the ticking clock goes towards midnight or doomsday, Armageddon. But out of those alerts in the past on this road to global war, this is over the top the most dangerous time we have ever been. And the Pentagon agrees with me. Now, I'm going to lay out some of these facts right now and put some articles up on screen. But this is so serious. My one day off before I go to Cleveland to cover the RNC. My one day to say bye to my kids, going on that dangerous mission that this republic demands I go on. I'm up here working because I understand if we don't avert what's unfolding, my children, your children don't have a future. Now, let's walk through a few of the things that have happened. Putin has come out in the last month twice. We've done reports on this and said they're preparing for nuclear war and the West is moving weapons up against its border and they may have to strike and that the world is in incredible danger and he can't believe Western media isn't reporting this and begged for a global debate about it, a discourse, a dialogue. The communist Chinese who are horribly evil but that our government's armed and given the missiles to be able to hit the United States effectively has been moving into the South China Sea. And now as we speak for stories on Infowars.com from mainstream news, but overseas, not here that major U.S. and Chinese fleets are lining up against each other, and the communist Chinese president said they're preparing for all-out war, including possible World War III. 
This is coming out of the communist Chinese leadership's mouths. They've never talked like this, even during the Korean War. Unprecedented. Then, you've got the coup that supposedly failed in the last 24 hours in Turkey, the gateway to Europe, with all the jihadists flooding in. Ergun is backed by the jihadists, and it looks like they've gotten back control. You've got that craziness going on. You've got all of these different governments going bankrupt and riots from Venezuela uh, to Nigeria. You've got the Pentagon, the Ministry of Defense in England, and others saying the world is in the most dangerous position it's ever been. And then you've got Obama coming out and saying the world's the safest it's ever been and our economy's the best it's ever been. We have derivatives all over the world coming due. We have Deutsche Bank, much bigger than Lehman Brothers, going down its stock, plunging. That crisis has already begun. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. I just got intense chills. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different things are coming together to create the perfect storm. And then you've got all these historians, all these geopolitical scientists, all these political scientists, all these analysts from Russia, England, the U.S., Canada, Australia, Germany, it doesn't matter, saying we have all the same political things happening that led to World War I and World War II. War starting, uh, all sorts of crises unfolding, and historically they don't know why, but since the time of the Romans, and the, and the Chinese and the Japanese wrote about this too, that it seemed when there was earth changes and volcanoes and earthquakes, that was a harbinger of war as well. And guess what? Record levels earthquakes, record levels volcanoes ever recorded in modern history. For whatever reason. A lot of political scientists also tie it to not just the effects of what's happening inside our atmosphere, but what's happening in our solar system. They've correlated sunspots and things like that uh, to economic collapse as well. We're entering that same cycle. That's that's Mr. Dent of, 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 of Bain Capital, a uh, best-selling author, a top guy at predicting things. He's got charts that bring all that in and top corporations listen to him. I mean, there's just so much aligning. Okay, that's Alex Jones's report. Emergency planet close to World War III. We're going to have a Special report on the other side from John Bown about how this is coming up. And then the next hour, we're going to be talking to Mark Hall, the film documentarian, about Fatala Gulen, about the Turkish coup. What's going on? Are we having a coup in our own educational system? Stay with us. We'll be right back. Globalists driving us all headlong into a hell pit have to say, we are most certainly at war. Shocking rhetoric? If it's a world war... Then you have to mobilize NATO. You have to get all the NATO countries to say, we are going to commit forces, both ground and air, to wipe ISIS off the face of the earth. We're supporting NATO, and we should at least get something out of it. And getting rid of ISIS and getting rid of this cancer that we're watching all over the world, that certainly would be a good thing. Western civilization is in a war. We should, frankly, test every person from here who's, who is of a Muslim background, and if they believe in Sharia, they should be deported. And if you are a believing Muslim, you believe that no man-made law, which is what they consider the Constitution, no man-made law can be above Sharia law. However, globalists like French President Francois Hollande and U.S. President Barack Obama would have us all behave as sitting ducks. Just fodder for the revolving door of repackaged horror. Blaming the carnage on lone wolf attacks and controlling the narrative right down to the very language we are allowed to use as we all face certain doom. Terrorist, because that's the event. Now notice over here, Muslims are not terrorists. The Holland and, the, and Merkel... Their jizya, their bride price for continuing in power under the new caliphate is to betray their own people, to lie to their about their own people and to their own people. Right. So they've, in fact, they've had the meetings where they say, system. you've got to give us cover for our jihad. We want to see you let us do this. Just like a gang member to be initiated has got to go kill an old lady for no reason. This is literally a gang initiation. Well, this is a gang initiation where the leaders of Europe are lying to their own people and they know they're lying Good to their God. own people. This is their bride price, their jizya tax for becoming safe dimmies and keeping their power. Now, some of them might just out and out say, I converted long ago, I'm a Muslim, fooled you. Or they might say, as long as I keep my palace and my villa and my estate, I don't really care. But their bride price, their jizya tax 
is to sell out their own people. The narrative has to change or more innocent people will certainly die. Anthony Frieda writes, perhaps instead of lying after every act of jihad and saying that Islam is a religion of peace and that terrorists are perverting Islam, Obama and his cohorts should tell the truth and express the fact that these horrific acts are sanctioned by Islamic dogma. At least 84 dead in Nice, France, after a Tunisian living in France rented a 19-ton refrigerated truck that he used to kill at least 84 people and critically injure 50 more. Ten of those killed were children. All of this on Bastille Day, the French independence holiday. The irony in this attack is probably lost on most people, because most people can't see from the jihadist perspective. The attack in Nice was an expression of the coming caliphate's own independence. Bad ideology beats no ideology. Even an evil, bad cult beats secular nothingness and nihilism. That's right. Uh, you know, the, the postmodern nihilistic, uh, uh, all things are the same. There's no there's no good. There's no bad. That means Islam wins. Because Don't we need a new crusade? I mean, the crusade's got a dirty name, but we were attacked for 400 years before we went in there and kicked their ass. And I'm sorry, if they want one, and, and this time we want to attack countries that are, that are uh, moderate. Saudi Arabia and all these other jihad centers, they want to fight. They need to really get one. Well, the, the, the good thing is that we have this constitution, so we have at least a legal uh, uh, trench line to fight in, which is that our constitution is above Sharia law. And anybody who says... For example, Hillary Clinton, she wants to, to pass... All right, and that's John Bowne's special report. Wake up, we are already in a war. And we're going to talk to Mark Hall, documentary filmmaker. He's going to be talking to us. Not so much... Well, we're going to talk about the Turkish coup, but you have to understand there is an Islamic coup that is underway against our own educational system here in the United States and in many countries all over the world. When we come back, we'll talk to him about his film, Killing Ed, and about the Gulen movement. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Alex Jones and our crew are on their way to Cleveland. Actually, some are already there. Uh, you can see the reports of our uh, flying plane pulling the banner of uh, Hillary for prison. You can see that uh, on Infowars.com as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, Rob Dew was flying in the plane and reporting on that interesting video. Uh, of course, they're going to be reporting this week, doing live reports, live broadcasts from the Republican National Convention in Cleveland. Uh, the next week, we will be in the uh, in Philadelphia for the Democrat National Convention. I want to give you a quick update on this shooting of the police officers in Baton Rouge. Right now, there's uh, three officers killed, three wounded. They have identified the shooter that they uh, say they killed. Uh, he's been identified, the suspect has been identified as a black male named Gavin Eugene Long of Kansas City, Missouri. So he came from Missouri to go to Baton Rouge and uh, shoot the police there. Uh, he is a veteran. He left the Marines in 2010 with an honorable discharge with the rank of sergeant. Uh, that's all we're being told right now by uh, sources, official sources. I want to uh, talk about what's going on with the Turkish coup. And, of course, as we last had a news broadcast on Friday, uh, it was just starting to develop. Sources were reporting that it was going to be something that was going to last, quite uh, possibly be a civil war. As we pointed out in the Friday uh, broadcast of the nightly news, this all began to occur suspiciously uh, immediately after an extradition uh, notice was given to the U.S. government to try to extradite a Turkish imam, Fatala Gulen, who is now residing in America, in Pennsylvania. And they put together a large indictment. For a very long time, there's been a um, competition between Fatala Gulen supporters and uh, President Erdogan, who is in charge of the government in Turkey. And there has been a back and forth. They've had uh, people arrested by the Gulenists, who were innocent and eventually freed, because he has a lot of people in the judi judiciary, as well as the police, the military, the bureaucracy, the educational establishment. So there's a, essentially a divided government. It's divided between two people who are basically Islamicists. There's not really, uh, neither of these guys are about a secular uh, government as we would understand it here in this country. Both of them have pushed very hard for Islamification of Turkey. And if you remember back in uh, November when this uh, uh, Russian jet was shut down uh, flying over Syria, invited there by the Syrian government to, to try to fight ISIS. And, of course, uh, the Turkish government said that they had flown over or too close to the border, and they shot down that jet. And at the time, Vladimir Putin said, 
Well, the problem is not the tragedy that we witnessed yesterday. He said the problem is much deeper. We see the current Turkish leadership over a significant number of years has been pushing a deliberate policy of supporting the Islamization of their country. But of course, if you look at what's going on with Fatala Gulen, the fact that he runs about a thousand schools worldwide outside the United States, they're all very explicitly and overtly uh, madrasas. In the United States, they don't run them that way because they want your money, your taxpayer money. You know, most of the money that you spend on taxes uh, is coming in terms of property taxes. That's one of our concerns as we look at uncontrolled immigration and the dreamers. How, how do we afford to give everybody who wants to come to America a free education all the way up through college and graduate school in the language of their choice? Well, the other flip side of that is that we have these uh, things called charter schools where taxpayers have to, uh, taxpayer money is used uh, and given to private schools. It's done as part of a reform movement, ostensibly, but you can see where it goes wrong. And we have in the studio with us right now, uh, Mark Hall, who's done a documentary talking about uh, how this has gone wrong already here in the United States. And of course, the Man who has been accused by the Turkish government of uh, starting a coup against them, I believe, is starting a coup in America against our educational system, Is Islamifying our educational system. Welcome, uh, Mark. David, thanks for having me back on InfoWars. Really appreciate it. Well, I wanted to get you back on because since we last talked, your film has been finished. It's premiered. It ran in New York for a week. Uh, the New York Times refused to even review it. Correct. You tried to get it on numerous, you have uh, been able to get into some film festivals. They highly recommended your film, as do I, because I've seen uh, the film. I saw a rough cut of it. I haven't seen the, the uh, finished version, but I saw a nearly finished version of it. It's a very well-produced film. And um, you tried to get on the film festivals here in Texas. And this is a story that has a lot of Texas interest in it because there are more of these Gulenist uh, schools here in Texas. There's 45 of them. About a third of the uh, schools that are here in the United States are here in Texas. Uh, this is an individual that gets about a half a billion dollars you know, as part of this network. These schools are all connected together. And yet you couldn't get any of these film festivals here to run it. Yes, that's correct. Uh, we applied for admission to the four largest film festivals in Texas. None of them would uh, show the film. Um, we've had tremendous difficulty getting the press here in Texas as well as elsewhere to cover this issue, the connection between the Gulen movement uh, and the charter schools. And of course, as you said, the taxpayer funds that are supporting these charter schools. And I want to add one thing, too that it's not just our tax dollars here in Texas we're funding Gulen charter schools upwards of $200 million a year of that $500 million. Mm. But it's also bond money. So the Gulen movement and their Harmony schools in Texas have raised over $300 million in the last, I guess, five or six years. And uh, they've just raised $44 million. And of that, all of those funds are guaranteed by the, um, the people of Texas mm -hmm. uh, against the future taxes that we're going to Absolutely. pay. Absolutely. Yeah. And not only that, those bonds are paid back by tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's a real racket. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And of course, when you talk about the racket, one of the things that you point out in the documentary, you've got people who were... Uh, people who are teaching there as whistleblowers. Uh, one of the issues that's been brought up uh, by people look investigating this. Of course, it's been investigated by the FBI primarily because of the way they have allocated contracts. You know, they get public money and they have to put these contracts for building schools up for open bidding. And yet, uh, tell us what's happened in that process. Well, incredibly, uh, the Gulen charter schools have been building new schools. They've been using Turkish um, construction companies that are based here in the United States that are owned by Gulen followers. And essentially, that's one of the ways that they skim millions of dollars back to their non-educational goals, of which I believe some of that money, our U.S. tax dollars, our Texas tax dollars, went to fund this coup, this violent coup in Turkey where almost 300 people have died. Um, it's very interesting to see the money flows. It's very interesting to see the people involved. And there's no doubt in my mind that this was a Gulen movement-initiated coup. Yeah, let's talk about that because we had, had a lot of interesting developments, a lot of uh, finger pointing as the coup was uh, shut down really fairly quickly. Uh, the initial reports made it look like this might break into a, a longer term civil war, but uh, uh, the government uh, was able to get this under control fairly quickly. What we had in the uh, aftermath of that was we had the 
Turkish President Erdogan blaming the U.S., the CIA, Gulen, okay, saying that they were behind this. And we saw, uh, we see Republican uh, representatives like Peter King saying, well, nobody in the Obama administration really knew what was going on. I think, personally looking at this, just my personal opinion is that uh, they were kind of sitting on the sidelines to see who's going to come out on top before they uh, jumped into anything. I think they knew exactly what was going on with this. And then in the uh, aftermath of this, you've had uh, the Turkish president uh, and one of the uh, people in his cabinet directly, uh, the person in his cabinet, uh, Suleiman Soy. Lou, I think is the way he pronounced his name, his labor minister, uh, went farther than Erdogan. He suggested that the U.S. was behind the coup. And what has happened here, of course, Turkey is a uh, NATO, it's part of NATO. They're trying to get into the European Union. And uh, the Turkish government has shut down uh, any movement on a uh, air base in southern Turkey that, the, that NATO uses. And he has implied that unless he gets his way with the extradition of Gulen, that that air base may not be reopened. And at the same time, he has a foreign minister who accuses the U.S. of being part of that coup. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, let's go back a few years. Uh, Gulen has a green card. He lives in Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania. He's surrounded by 100 or so followers at his compound called the Golden Generation Worship and Retreat Center. Um, from that compound, he's been able to manage his charter schools and direct his followers all across the United States. Um, you mentioned Insterlich Air Force Base, and I think one of the things that's going on in the background right now is a very interesting negotiation between our State Department and the Foreign Ministry there in Turkey. Hang on, we're gonna we got to take a break, and we're going to be right back. We're talking to Mark Hall, who has done a documentary about what's going on in Turkey and the. I'm David Knight in studio. As I said before, Alex and crew are on their way to. Uh, the RNC in Cleveland, they will be broadcasting live from there this week. A lot of special reports. We have a lot of reporters that are going to be at the Republican National Convention. But, of course, on Friday we had this coup that uh, began in Turkey. It's now been put down. We've had about uh, 6,000 people arrested in the crackdown. About 290 is the latest count of people that we believe have been killed. About 2,800 soldiers are being held in prison. And you can see the pictures up on the Drudge Report, how uh, Erdogan is uh, humiliating them, uh, stripping them naked and having them lay next to each other and on top of each other taking their picture. About 2,745 judges have faced arrest. We've had a civil war going on in Turkey that hasn't really been covered by a press for quite some time. And the two sides of that civil war, I would say, wouldn't you say, Mark? And, of course, I have with me uh, documentary filmmaker uh, Mark Hall, who did the film Killing Ed. Uh, he looked at the worst-case scenario of charter schools. And that worst-case scenario that we've got going on right now is uh, a school network, a, a large uh, charter school network that is being run by a Turkish imam, Gul uh, Fatala Gulen, who is uh, really kind of the uh, polar opposite of uh, Erdogan and Turkey. They're the two power centers that are going on there. There are some uh, constitutionalists and some secularists that are there, but of course, our CIA and our government has been involved with the two Islamicists there. The guy who is the president, Erdogan, and then uh, Fatala Gulen, who is uh, here in America. And what I'm most concerned about, and what you're very concerned about, and what your documentary, Killing Ed, talks about is really the coup that is taking place against the American educational system. And we have to understand how the charter school system can be taken over, not only uh, by crony capitalists, but also by someone who wants to come in and indoctrinate and Islamify, or I guess we could say the Turkification of the American educational system. Talk to us a little bit about what happens in these schools that are sold as science and math schools here in the United States. Yeah, absolutely, David. These schools um, hold themselves out as, as STEM academies, science, technology, engineering, and math specialized schools. Uh, they operate in 26 different states around the country. There's about 150 now. Uh, several more will be opening in the next school year, including three here in Texas. Um, they are generating in excess of $500 million a year from different states through tax dollars. Uh, when you look at the schools, and we actually interview several teachers who have taught in Gulen charter schools, um, there's some real questions about high test scores, which they all claim to have, as well as every child going to college. One of the things we show in the film is that the Gulen movement has actually established its own universities, one of which is in Houston, called the North American College. So they can say, yeah, all of our kids that graduate from Harmony 
or Magnolia in California or concept schools in the Midwest, they all go to college because they all apply to these schools where they're guaranteed to be accepted by Gulen, by these Gulen universities. It's very interesting. Yeah. And um, also the things that are very troubling are, are the mistreatment of special education children yeah. uh, that we show in the film. We had undercover video that was taken by teachers very concerned about this. Um, discrimination against our teachers, um, pay differences between the many Turkish teachers that they bring in on H-1B visas that are followers of Fatula Gulen. And also the film shows um, uh, two different followers of, of the Gulen movement that have left the movement that talk deeply about the corruption, the immigration fraud, the H-1B visas that have been issued in the thousands to bring different followers of Fatula Gulen to work in their schools or to work in the many constellation of nonprofit uh, organizations uh, and uh, things like construction companies that are building the schools. Mm -hmm. um, the corruption is is beyond belief. Many people believed they wouldn't believe it when we showed this film. And, and you know, it's uh, my film six months ago when we were finishing it was called a conspiracy film. <laughs> there, the only conspiracy here is the yeah. Gulen conspiracy. That's this right. is factual. We have first person point of view from many people that have been affected by this group negatively. And uh, it's time for our media to wake up to this. I have to say, uh, you, David, were one of the few people to actually talk openly about the Gulen movement in the United States. Other people like Adam Curry, Stephanie Saul, Stahl of 60 Minutes, um, uh, excuse me, Stephanie Saul of New York Times and Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes were really the, the handful of people that reported on this. And I have to commend you for that. Well, thank you. You know, when we see something like this, we, we don't, uh, we go through it and we look at it. And if it's, if it's true, we don't, no matter how crazy it sounds to people. I mean, this does sound crazy when you look at it and it is crazy, but if it's true, you've got to put this out there. You know, when we reported about this, I did an article, you're talking about uh, getting on this. I interviewed you. And then shortly after that, when uh, the Erdogan government began to sue the Gulen network here in America, uh, I reported on that lawsuit and I went back and, and uh, reported some on uh, our interview that we had had uh, when you uh, first came out. Now that was December 14th. And then within two weeks, uh, we got our site hacked. And it was interesting that what, when, they, when they hacked our site, what they put up was a story supposedly coming from me, okay, and I write very few articles here at InfoWars, but a story coming from me saying, breaking, coup d'etat in Turkey, Erdogan flees to U.S. air base, and talking about how it was a military coup in Turkey, essentially predicting this seven and a half months yes. earlier, uh, a warning to us. A warning to Erdogan. I guess they thought we were Erdogan's uh, surrogate here criticizing Gulen. We don't uh, see Erdogan as a good guy either. And I thought it was interesting when I saw this happening uh, on Friday that there was a Turkish coup going on there. I said, oh, what's happened with the Gulen movement this week? So I quickly looked to see what had happened the preceding week. I saw there had been multiple arrests of people that had been accused of being Gulenists, that uh, even though they've had uh, court cases before, they had the largest indictment they'd ever had. Uh, Gulen himself and many others were facing multiple life sentences uh, being with the accusations from the Erdogan movement. And uh, that indictment had been delivered just the day or so before that and just two hours before the coup began they had delivered that indictment wanting an extradition of Fatala Gulen from Pennsylvania back to Turkey and then the coup begins okay so I kind of don't think that it was a false flag by Erdogan I, I think no. it all uh, indications point to the fact that it is possibly this guy who is trying to take over our US educational system well what I was told uh, over the last two days since the coup occurred is that this has nothing to do with Erdogan, uh, you know, creating his own coup. Um, they would have asked for Gulen's extradition anyway. Yeah. Uh, those files, as you say, were uh, finally finished uh, on Friday, the uh, morning before the coup. There were some other things happening in the background in Turkey. As I understand it, there were a number of uh, military officers and other people that are in the Turkish military that are followers of Gulen because Gulen has infiltrated the Turkish military, uh, their judiciary, their police force. They have a lot of people in the media mm -hmm. um, in Turkey. But anyway, these particular um, men in the military were followers of Fatula Gulen, and they were going to lose their commissions. So this was a last moment attempt, I believe, to prevent the Gulen movement from actually being completely eradicated from Turkey. But it's still our problem here in the United States. That's the key Gulen thing, yes. 
lives here in the United States. He earns millions and millions of dollars from taxpayers here. And he operates our schools here, many, many charter, charter schools. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about the leverage that Erdogan has against the United States with these uh, nuclear weapons at this air base that they closed down. They said they're not going to open up that air base unless they get their extradition. And, of course, there's a lot of nuclear weapons there. We're going to talk about the details of that with Mark Hall. Killing Ed is the film. You can buy it at Amazon.com. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and I'm here with documentary filmmaker Mark Hall. His film is Killing Ed. And we're talking about not only the Turkish coup and the two different polls and political polls in uh, Turkey, but we're also talking about a coup that is uh, really coming at our educational system here in America through the charter school system. And that's what his documentary film, Killing Ed, is about. It is now, you can get it on DVD uh, at Amazon.com. It's been shut down at a lot of film festivals because, you know, the way we do things now in the United States is if you don't agree with somebody on an issue, you don't debate them. You just make sure that you censor them. And we see this happening with the Vaxxed documentary at Tribeca. They didn't like uh, that documentary's content. They didn't want the information to be out there. They didn't feel like they could debate that. We see that over and over again with the climate change debate. They don't want to debate that. They would rather uh, shut it down and uh, accuse people that are uh, that disagree with them of uh, being racketeering, influence, uh, corrupt, you know, trying to come after them with a RICO statute. That's what we see now. We see people trying to uh, jail the competition, but at least uh, uh, pervasively to censor uh, a different idea than the mainstream media is trying to sell us. So it's very important for us to get this information out. I want to talk to Mark now about this uh, lawsuit that was filed by Erdogan's uh, lawyers. And I understand it's Erdogan. Yeah, he corrected me in this. <laughs> I've, been, I've been using the uh, southern pronunciation uh, here. But uh, this is a lawsuit that's been filed both in Texas and California where there's a lot of uh, the Gulan schools uh, uh, in both of these states. And they're looking at a couple of different issues. One of them, the H-1B visa program, which has gotten some discussion in terms of our open borders. Before we do, real quickly, I want to remind you that we have a sale now going on in DNA Force. And, of course, that's one of our premier ingredients, uh, our premier supplements that we have. Uh, one of the ingredients in it costs $30,000 per batch. So this is a very expensive supplement that we have. It's, I think it's perhaps our most expensive uh, supplement we have. So this is a good time to stock up on it or to try it when it's 25% off. You can look at the clinical studies. A lot of people have done clinical studies on bio-PQQ compound. Uh, that's one of the key ingredients. Ingredients in this. That's what makes it so expensive. Uh, extremely hard to secure, extremely expensive to buy, but BioPQQ is incredibly potent in terms of antioxidants. Uh, it also has um, CoQ10, uh, other digestive enzymes, uh, Reservatrol, and many other things in that uh, uh, formulation of DNA Force. But take a look at the studies, take a look at the reviews on InfoWars.com and uh, Get, info, uh, get DNA for us right now while it's 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Okay, now, Mark, uh, let's talk a little bit about this lawsuit that's been filed um, uh, by the lawyers for Erdogan here. It's uh, filed with the Texas Educational Agency. Talk to us about the issues with the H-1B program and how they believe that is, they allege that's being abused. Well, one of the things that's happened in the Gulen charter schools is that there's been... Tremendous abuses of immigration, our immigration system. They brought in um, not only teachers, but they brought in um, people like principals and accountants. And, of course, these are displacing U.S. workers. I mean, it's a real labor problem when we have so many people out of work in our country. Um, they bring in Turkish teachers because one of the things that you find throughout the charter schools that are run by followers of Fethullah Gulen in the United States is that they teach a kind of Turkish supremacism. Uh, instead of teaching Spanish, they're teaching Turkish language <laughs> to our children here in Texas. That's amazing. Um, so it's really you know, not a useful thing for those of us that are living on the border with Mexico. That's right. That's um, right. Yeah, you need to know, not, not Mexico or Spanish, but you need or anything about uh, any of the countries around here or Texas, you need to know about Turkey, according to them. And that's the amazing thing, too. When you talk about them bringing in people, and they say in the lawsuit here, legal counsel, budget analysts, human resource professionals, principals, superintendents, counselors, etc. These are not positions for which they can't find Americans to fill these jobs. But the key thing I think people need to understand is that this is a... 
uh, school that is financed by the taxpayers. So these are taxpayer paid positions. They're bringing people in here instead of using Americans to fill these positions in, uh, in the schools. Absolutely, David. And one of the things we show in the film uh, through interviews with one of the former uh, members of the Gulen movement who taught at a charter school in Ohio is that all teachers that come over on H-1B visas, they're followers of Fatula Gulen, and they have sworn out an oath of secrecy as well as fealty, let's say, to Fatula Gulen and this Islamic movement, which is global in nature. Um, and one of the things that they've sworn to is to kick back a certain amount of their income each pay period back to uh, the Gulen movement and to the compound in, in uh, Sailorsburg, Pennsylvania, where Gulen lives. Um, it's anywhere from between 10 and 30 percent of their salary. It's kicked back in cash to a Turkish administrator running these schools throughout our country. And I believe that money is, is definitely being used for non-educational purposes. And, of course, this could have gone back to Turkey. I don't want to speculate, but I, it would make sense to me that that money perhaps has been used to foment this coup. Yeah, and of course, uh, it's not just that, but it also alleges that that has been happening with the contractors who build the physical buildings there. Uh, that uh, is one of the reasons why they don't put this up for competitive bidding is because that is uh, filtering back to that organization. One of the ways that they answered this statement, and here's Harmony's statement, they say, uh, the rate of teachers under the H-1B visas, which are authorized and issued by the U.S. federal government, uh, is only 7% and decreasing each year. It's a lie. Was, yeah, it's a exactly. Lie. And that's what he says. He said that this, in response to that, he says the uh, statement is both misleading and false. He says, first of all, they only talk about teachers and they exclude all these other uh, issues that we're talking about in terms of uh, lawyers, human resource professionals, budget analysts, principals and so forth. They exclude all that. And Harmony, in fact, identifies itself to the federal government as an H-1B dependent, which means that at least 15 percent, at least 15 percent of its workforce was hired through H-1B uh, visa program. So they will reply to this uh, lawsuit, uh, to the uh, complaint to the Texas Education Agency and say, no, it's only uh, 7 percent when they're telling the federal government that they have 15 percent or more. Well, this is one of the things we can do as Americans is we can petition organizations like the Texas Education Agency, as well as the similar agency in California that have both received these requests from the Erdogan government, of whom I do not agree with. I believe both Gulen and uh, Erdogan are, are political Islam followers. They're Islamists. Mm -hmm. uh, we haven't been helping those that we really should have been helping in Turkey, and now we're facing uh, the consequences of it. This is uh, it's a story that is it's really uh, truth is stranger than fiction. But to get back to the H-1B visa issue, um, these H-1B visa holders coming in uh, that are Gulen followers, um, they are to be paid a prevailing wage. Now, that prevailing wage is to make sure that our American citizens, our neighbors, are not undercut by foreign labor. It's a requirement by the Department of Labor. Uh, what happens is the Gulen members come in. They may be paid 40000 or $44,000 a year for uh, a position at the school, for which they're not really qualified generally. Mm -hmm. They're not certified. We don't know their backgrounds. And the deal is that they're going to kick back thousands and thousands of dollars per paycheck um, from that $44,000. Uh, we interviewed a, a teacher uh, at one of the schools, and I've heard this over and over again. He was paid maybe a fourth of what her Turkish counterpart, who had the same experience, um, was paid at one of the Harmony schools here in Texas. Wow. So it's a massive scam. They're skimming money out of construction contracts, other contracts that Gulen owners, Gulen follower owners are operating to service the schools, to do other things here in the United States. And it's something that our media, our politicians, our academicians, um, everyone should be concerned about. And We're talking about people not being concerned about it. We've got a lot of officials who are given junkets to go to Turkey. Okay, it's a lot of congressmen, a lot of local officials, our police chief here. Uh, they send them on junkets to uh, Turkey and uh, 
push uh, Turkish culture and other things to them. I don't know what else is going on on these junkets. But, you know, it, it, they present themselves as being schools of science and math. Why? Because so many people are fed up with what Bill Ayers and his people have done to our educational system, turning them into social justice warriors where they don't learn anything. They're simply indoctrinated. So they know people are hungry for science and math, and yet only 42% of these Turkish teachers uh, uh, teach uh, math or science, okay? It's, it's a game that they're playing here to take over our educational system. Stay with us. We'll come back. We're going to talk about what's going on with the nuclear bases as well as with ISIS in Turkey. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight here with Mark Hall, documentary filmmaker, producer of Killing Ed. You can now get this on DVD at Amazon.com. You need to see this film because you need to understand it's not just the Turkish coup that's going on, but we have a coup going on against our educational system. We were just talking about this, how difficult it is for people to understand uh, some of these things where they reach uh, so far, people say, that, that can't be possible. I, I can't imagine a situation where you've got a Turkish imam who comes here with the help and the assistance of the CIA, and then they set up a, uh, a system using charter schools to get a half a billion dollars a year to try to uh, take our children towards uh, Islamification in this country, not just in uh, Turkey. But, you know, that's the reality that he shows in this documentary, Killing Ed. And uh, I want to go back to uh, what he has to tell us about uh, the nukes at the uh, Air Force Base. Uh, we need to take a look at what's going on with Erdogan as well, Erdogan. Uh, what is happening uh, with his connection with NATO, how he is going to be blackmailing the United States to get his rival, Fatala Gulen, extradited. Uh, I think he's going to be blackmailing them with this uh, base, which uh, also, as uh, Mark pointed out, has a lot of uh, nuclear weapons on it as well. Before we do, real quickly, I want to let you uh, know again that we have a special on DNA Force now 25% off at InfoWarsLife.com. Again, that is our formulation, one of our uh, premier formulations. It's uh, $30,000 per batch to add in this uh, patented BioPQQ compound. It's backed by 175 clinical studies, much, much more potent than you'll find in any other antioxidant. Uh, you will find um, uh, these clinical studies will define what this can do for you. We can't make those, uh, con uh, draw those uh, conclusions for you here on the radio. But uh, you can read those uh, reviews as well as the clinical studies. And right now you can try this at 25% off or stock up if you've been using this at InfoWarsLife.com. That helps to support our operation, helps to support our reporters. We're going to be covering the Republican National Convention with Alex Jones all this next week. And, of course, we'll be at the Democrat National Convention the next week. Uh, also, get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt. Now is a great time to uh, fly that flag. And uh, with your support, we've been able to fly the banners behind the uh, airplane. If you want to see that report, you can see Rob Dew riding in the plane. You can see the pictures of the uh, banner that is now uh, flying over Cleveland. They're going to shut down that, I believe, as the convention is going on. They're going to make it a no-fly zone. But we've got that out there, and there's a lot of press, a lot of delegates already in place. And uh, that's made possible by your support. So get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt. It helps to support our operation along with the supplements that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. And we offer uh, these things to you as a discount from time to time as a thank you. And that's we've got 25% off of DNA Force, one of our most expensive uh, products that we have because of BioPQQ. 25% off right now at InfoWarsLife.com. Mark, let's talk a little bit about uh, the connection. And as we... Uh, between all these different schools. The uh, various schools operate in different jurisdictions under different names. Like here in Texas, we have the Harmony Schools. In California, they go by, what's the name? Magnolia. Magnolia Schools, okay. And they say, well, we're not connected. But you document how they are connected uh, in your uh, documentary, Killing Ed. Let's take a real quick look at a, a clip from the documentary where you show how they are connected. Gulen Charter School operators will claim that their school are unrelated. They'll uh, also will claim no connection to the Gulen Charter schools that are abroad. There is um, always a way to find out that these schools indeed are connected. Um, they often use the same uh, text in their welcome letters. These are welcome letters that are uh, maybe um, posted at the beginning of a student handbook for the year. So you have here the um, Bay Area Technology School in Oakland, 
And the second paragraph says, Baytech is a reflection of all of us. All of our policies are intended to provide a safe and orderly environment that will be conducive to learning. But then you have um, the school in Pennsylvania. YSCP is a reflection of us all. Our policies are intended to provide a safe and orderly environment that will be conducive to learning. Oklahoma, Discovery School of Tulsa is a reflection of us all. All of our policies are intended to provide a safe and orderly environment that will be conducive to learning. Tajikistan, Dushanabe International School is a reflection of all of us. All of our policies are intended to provide a safe and orderly environment that will be conducive to learning. Ethiopia, Najashi Ethio Turkish International School is a reflection of all of us. Hong Kong, the Rosebud Primary School, a reflection of all of us. The school in Korea, a reflection of all of us. Massachusetts, Hampton Charter School of Science is a reflection of all of us. Magnolia School, same sentence. These are all schools that will deny a connection with one another. So they pretend that they're all independent schools. They pretend that they're schools of science and math. And yet, as you just documented, as people just uh, saw and heard, uh, they are all connected. Yeah, generally speaking, this is just one example of the connections between uh, the charter schools that we're paying for here in our country and uh, the over a thousand other schools that the Gulen movement operates in other countries. You can see Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia, they're operating in Africa, essentially every continent except antarctica mm. uh, and that might be soon who knows <laughs> but they're operating these schools certain people have called this the education jihad um you know the gulen movement has also been called uh by daniel pipes um uh, jihad uh, or islamism 2.0 mm -hmm. because they're using our system to really get their political will uh, established and there's well, that is always the case people have to understand that when they turn their children over to the schools okay you're turning your your children over to people in many cases you don't know what their background is you don't know what their agenda is and that's why we've looked at so many different aspects whether it is common core or whether it is the uh, uh, the social justice warrior uh, indoctrination that's going on in our schools now people need to understand who these people are that are setting the values for the educational system they're not really concerned whether Johnny can read or write. They're really concerned about getting these kids and bringing them into their political point of view. And that's what we've seen from Plato and his Plato's Republic. That's what he advocated, making sure you don't know who your parents are in Plato's Republic. Uh, they wouldn't even know who their parents were. They would be raised by the state. The state would instill their values. And so we need to be very careful and understand when we look at these schools, these are the values that they're putting into your children. Well, I want to point out, too, that um, I don't believe that there's overt uh, teaching of Islam in the schools. They're way too smart yes. to teach. They don't want to Islam. lose that half billion dollars. They don't want to lose yeah. that tax money, and they understand that that would be a problem. However, I do believe, and I've, I've researched this, and, and we could not put it in the, in the film, but I do believe that there's conversions going on. I do believe that there's indoctrination going on. They generally take uh, boys on trips on overnight camping trips uh, that they think might be susceptible mm -hmm. um, to joining the Gulen movement. It only it may be five or ten boys. They're uh, grooming people. They're grooming people as a pedophile would groom them for their particular uh, point of view, for their religion and this sort of thing. That's what these these trips to Turkey that they do with children with uh, with politicians are grooming the politicians as well. Well, I, I think you might be right. I mean, there's all kinds of corruption that's gone on. Our tax money has been used to send many thousands of children on summer trips from these schools. Uh, to Turkey to spend time with the, the Turkish children at the schools there. They've sent many, many hundreds of our politicians. There's been a congressional uh, inquiry into this. Um, people even like Ted Poe, who's a very conservative Republican, um, went on one of these trips to Baku. Um, it's, just, it's just amazing to see who's been uh, involved with this group. Mm -hmm. I think many of these politicians have been manipulated. They may not know exactly who they've been dealing with. But it's uh, hundreds of politicians from the federal government all, all the way down to our local. It's government. a common technique. You know, when we looked at the case of uh, Justice Scalia dying, you know, we, we look at situations where you'll have these people will take junkets and trips and then they'll use them to try to gain friendship and influence with uh, people. And, and you can never know exactly you know, what was going on with this. Was it a quid pro quo or are they just making uh, close alliances and friendships with people? It's not clear. But let's talk about the other side of this. Now, we're talking about Patala Gulen, who's running this network of schools here in the United States. He 
obviously had help from the CIA in getting here in the United States. Uh, we've also got uh, Erdogan getting help from the CIA and also Erdogan helping in turn being essentially a, a conduit for ISIS. We've seen uh, the videos showing massive convoys of trucks uh, bringing in oil into Turkey. Okay, so they're they're laundering the Turkish oil, the uh, ISIS oil for them and also acting as a conduit for weapons. So you've got uh, different groups that want to get this guy out of uh, Turkey as well. But he's got this uh, base. Talk about the base and talk about the nukes that are there and the leverage that he's going to use to both stay in power and to try to get uh, Fatala Gulen extradited. Well, it's been reported that there's 90 nuclear warheads at the Insulik Air Force Base in Turkey. Um, and I understand there's some kind of strange agreement that 40 of those nuclear weapons are reserved for Turkey to use in case there's an incursion <laughs> under Article 6 of the NATO agreement. I don't know particularly about that, but it has been reported that um, Erdogan is, is not allowing uh, NATO missions from Insul Insulik. Uh, and I believe that he's using that as a, as a bargaining chip right now to get Gulen extradited quickly back to the United States. And who can blame him? Oh, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's his leverage right there. And, of course, uh, this is going to develop as we go through the various days. Thank you so much. Mark Hall, the documentary is Killing Ed. You can